You know, this year, Rhythms of Grace has been so awesome just to understand that God wants us to move into places and be the people that He's created us to be. And we've discovered over the year that there are things we need to do, but yet even now, after all these months, we seem to be failing in some areas. We seem to be uh, doing things that we know we shouldn't be doing. And the Bible is so clear in the Scripture that we're going to read today that there are things that we still need to do. There are things that we need to still understand in order to know that when we leave this place, God's presence goes with us. We really, really need the revelation that when we go from here, that God's presence is with us. If you have to ask me this question, that every moment of every day, do I understand and do I remember that God's presence is with me? I'm going to say to you, no. There are times I may think things or say things or behave in a way that doesn't portray what God would want me to portray in my life. And I think we all struggle with that from time to time because we go, we are human, we go through good times, we go through bad times. And really my encouragement to you today is this, when we leave here, God's presence goes with us. When we do something wrong, God's presence goes with us. When we're faced with a situation, if we could just understand that God's presence is with us, we will overcome so much quicker. Do you know, we've been talking about being on a rest. We've been talking about Matthew chapter 11, and I want to read it to you. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, from the message, just follow with me on the screen. The Bible says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it, Jesus says. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Keep company with me. Jesus is saying, come to me. Be in my presence and see what I do. And do what I do and you'll see. You will see that your life will turn out differently. You will no longer be worn out or burnt out. Last week I went to the doctor, I had something small cut out of my arm here, and while he was cutting, I said, you know, doctor, I'm just feeling so tired. I just feel worn out and tired. And he started laughing, and I thought, well, that's not what I wanted to, give me something to make me uh, more energetic. I don't know, I'm just feeling really tired and drained. And he said, it's August, September, it's actually September. He said, so many people come at this time of the year and they're feeling tired and worn out. And I believe many of us here today feeling tired and worn out. And you know, we can look around and let's be honest, I can look and say, I know there are certain things that might relieve stress in my life. Going for a ride, uh, for some of you it might be going for a jog, it might be doing some decoupage, I don't know, whatever your hobby might be. And we start looking at these things to relieve the stress and to, and to get some rest in our lives. But Jesus actually gives us the answer. And I've really been trying to practice this more than ever this week. And I must tell you, I'm not feeling half as tired. I mean, I was so tired last Sunday at the second service, I forgot to finish my story. Do you know that? So if you were at the second service, please get the video recording of the first service because it's got the ending of the story. Okay. That's how it's been. And as I've been focusing on God and His presence every day, I found that that is the key. Yes, all these other things are important. We need to do what we enjoy. But God's presence is what brings us the rest. Are you worn out? Are you tired or burnt out on religion? Even come to me. When we come to him every single day, we will find that we'll no longer be worn out. We'll find that we won't be tired. God will give us that energy to make it through. And so we need to constantly be concentrating on, on what God can do in our lives. On Thursday, we, the staff, we pray and uh, we had a short little prayer meeting here and I asked the guys, I said, just for one minute, one minute, 60 seconds, close your eyes and think of what the goodness of God. Just think of his goodness. Think of what God has done in your life. Just ponder on him or nothing. Just think of him. And you know, after one minute, every one of us failed. Our mind wandered to something, the work we had to do, the lunch we were going to eat, what's going to happen tomorrow, what's happening on the weekend. And I want to encourage you, try that and see what happens See if you can last for one minute without your mind straying. You see, we've become a society where we cannot stay focused on one thing. We cannot stay focused on God. There are too many other distractions, and we've spoken about this, and we get so easily caught up by the distractions that we don't spend time in the presence of God. And if we could just focus on Him first and foremost and His presence, I promise you now our lives will change. Our days will be different. The people that we, we bless during the day, it will be so much different because we have been with God. We have been in His presence. It's amazing how, how the Lord said this, Jesus, He did so much and constantly 
he did certain things in his life. The Bible says, and Jesus says, learn from me, watch how I do it. Now, the only way we can watch how Jesus did it was by reading the word of God. And in God's holy word, in the scripture, we see what Jesus did. Jesus went out in power. He prayed for people, healed the sick. He did what he had to. But before he did that, he always spent time with his father. He always spent time in the presence of God. He didn't take a buddy with. He, took, he went on his own. And he went and he spent time in the presence of God. Yes, there's time to pray and be in God's presence together. We are doing that right now. But on our own, to be in God's presence and to hear what he has for our lives. Just to focus on him and know that he has everything in his hands. He's got everything under control. When we have our lives in his hands, we can confess that and trust it and believe it. But it's his presence that we need to understand is with us. His presence that goes for us, before us even. And we go into those places he needs us to be. And so we see God's presence in the life of Jesus. Jesus did nothing without the Father. He said that in his word. He did nothing without the Father. You and I need to get to the point where whatever we do, whether it's at work, at play, we're doing nothing without God knowing and God showing us the way forward. So there is another example in the Bible. It's found in Exodus chapter 33. If you have your Bibles with you, quickly turn to Exodus chapter 33. And we're going to find out what Moses did. Just as Jesus went into the presence of God and remained and was focused on God's presence, so you and I need to be the same way. But we see in the Old Testament, Moses, Moses was focused on the presence of God. When the people turned away from God's presence, things went wrong. But the minute they were in God's presence and focused on God on a daily basis, their lives were blessed. And so here in, in Exodus chapter 33, just to put this into context, Moses has just received the Ten Commandments. He's gone up on the mountain and he's received the Ten Commandments written by God. And then God says, you better get down there because your people have been waiting so long and they think that you're dead and disappeared and gone and they've created an idol of their own making out of their earrings, out of the gold, out of their jewelry. They've made this idol and they've begun worshiping this idol. After all that I've done and taken you out of Egypt, they're worshiping this idol. So Moses goes down and he sees what's happening and he gets so angry that he throws the, the, the Ten Commandments down and he breaks them. And so God says to them, he's angry at them as well. Just leave them for a short while and they've forgotten. This is what happens to you and I. We're at church worshiping God and then by tomorrow we've forgotten that God even exists so that he's part of our lives. We've forgotten that his presence goes with us. So we can't point or judge the people for anything because I think very often we do the same thing. We run to everyone else for help but to God and know that his presence is here. And so let's read Exodus 33 verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, get going you and the people you brought up from the land of Egypt. God's not even saying I brought them anymore. You brought them. I don't want them. Go up to the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I told them, I will give this land to your descendants. It's a promise God made. And I will send an angel before you to drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Go up to this land that flows with milk and honey. But I will not travel among you, for you are a stubborn and rebellious people. Maybe he's speaking to some of us today, stubborn and rebellious. We refuse to change our ways. Those things that are hidden in the corner of our hearts, we refuse to change them. We leave church here, we go to work tomorrow, we do what we like at work, we do however we speak to people, however we like, and we do things however we like, go to school, treat people the way we like, clicks, all sorts of things. And so off we go and those hidden things are there and we wonder why God is not blessing us to the extent that we know that he can bless us. It's simply because... We have these hidden things in our hearts and we become hard-headed, stubborn, and rebellious. God says, if I did go with you, I would surely destroy you along the way. Whoa. When the people heard these stern words, they went into mourning and stopped wearing their jewelry and their fine clothes. For the Lord had told Moses to tell them, you are a stubborn and rebellious people. If I were to travel with you for even a moment, I would destroy you. Remove your jewelry and fine clothes while I decide what to do with you. So from the time they left Mount Sinai, the Israelites wore no more jewelry or fine clothes. So look at verse 12. One day Moses said to the Lord, this is before they left, you have been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me, I know you by name, and I look favorably on you. Is it 
If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people in any case. So Moses is reminding God, saying, you know what, I need somebody to go with me. I can't just go alone. And by the way, these are your people. And the Lord replied, okay, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me and on your people? If you don't go with us, how will they know? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. Moses knew how important the presence of God was. And he said, if your presence doesn't go with me, do not let us leave this place. And this is how we should be. Lord, if your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to work tomorrow. I don't want to leave this place. I don't want to go to lunch and moan at my family because that's what happens or whatever the case may be. I want to leave this place in your presence being a loving, godly person, the person that you've created me to be. Do you know what Moses did? He got rid of everything. He went to God and he asked for forgiveness on behalf of the people. The people were sorry. They stopped wearing their jewelry. They took it all off and they refused to wear it. Why? Because they were sorry for what they had done. Do you know that jewelry really represented the sin, the idolatry? Because they took their jewelry off and they made an idol. You know when we've done something wrong? Don't we hate that thing that we've done wrong when we're sorry? We stay away from it. We don't want to know anything about it. And I believe the, people, the children of Israel took off their jewelry. They didn't want to see it. They didn't want to know anything because that had caused them to turn away from God and make an idol. This is what we do. We push aside the thing when we realize we're wrong. But the sad thing is this. We, we realize after some time that, hey, it was okay. And we go back to the same thing. And we hide those things in the corner of our hearts and say, you know, this little thing that's wrong, I'm doing nine out of 10, it's fine. The 10 out of 10 I'm gonna struggle with. And we, and we hide it in the corner of our hearts and we think that we don't have to do anything with it. And God is saying, do something about those hidden things. Moses did, he took it. He asked God for forgiveness. God forgave him and God said, I will go with you and my favor will be upon you. When we leave from here, and we know we have removed everything that is hidden from our hearts, the way we treat people, the way we behave, how we do things that are wrong, God is going to see our hearts and your, His favor will be upon you. His favor will be upon you at work, for your business, for your finances. His favor will be upon you with your relationships in every single area. And when God's favor is upon you, nothing, nothing at all can stop it. But what we do is we stop it because we've hidden things in our hearts. Moses says this, and I love the way the New King James says it. He said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? How are people going to know that we are children of God if they do not see the presence of God on our lives? How are they going to know when we're just sinning and living our lives and just not even caring because the jewelry that we created, that sin, it just becomes okay and then it becomes a way of life and our conscience gets seared. People are not going to know any difference. But when we're standing up for what is right and for the truth, when we refuse not to do what other people do just because the crowd is doing it and we refuse to do these things, God's presence is with us. People will see His grace. They will see His favor upon our lives. Wouldn't you like to see God's grace and favor on your life every day? I know when we're at church we feel like, hey, God's grace is upon me. His favor is on me. He's here to heal. He's here to set free. He's here to make a difference. And yes, we come together and we receive and we're in His presence. But you know what? When we leave this place, His presence goes with us. Moses had to come clean with God. And I really believe that there are some people here, you are struggling to go to the next step, to the next level. You're wondering why your business is not moving anywhere. It's just stagnating or actually going in the wrong direction. You're doing some things right. As Kieran was speaking, you're tithing, but you're doing other things that are wrong. Sometimes we think that tithing or certain things are a magic wand. You know, our lives must be complete in Him. Every part, spirit, soul, and body. And so what happens is we live the wrong life on the side. We do certain things that are right, and we expect God to bless us. We forget His presence and almost feel like we've got to do things to be in His presence when God is saying, my presence is with you. 
And church, if we just begin to focus on God's presence in your relationship, in your marriage, through your family, in your family, in every area, if we just begin to focus on the presence of God, knowing that He goes with us, our lives will be different. It'll just be an automatic thing to be a blessing to other people. We'll go from one level to the next. So today I want you to search your heart. Maybe there's a door that is closed, your heart is closed, and there are hidden things. Maybe someone's been asking you to do something and you refuse to do it. You've just been refusing because you're being stubborn. And God is saying, let that thing go. Open up your heart. Those hidden things that are in there, just like Moses did, he dealt with them. God forgave them. And God's presence went with them every day. Listen to what David said. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away. Stress, being tired, worn out, sick, my body worn, uh, wore away, wasted away. And I groaned all day long. Some of you have been groaning all day long maybe. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. Why? So God could change him. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. And then the Bible says, pause and think on this. Today, there are things that we need to let go of. We need to come clean with God and say, Lord, this thing, now, once and for all, I want to let it go. And the thing is this, we've done this many times here at Grace Place. We've let it go at church and we've picked it up on the way out. We've picked it up in the car. We've picked it up when we got to work the next day. And God is saying, leave it, leave it here. And know tomorrow when you wake up, know that my presence is with you and you can overcome. You can be the better person. You can live a different life. You can make a different choice. And so can I, every single day. But what is God's presence to you? And what is His presence to me? Do we walk in His presence or not? God is so good. And He has a way for you. Do you know one of the things we've been praying for, there's some people here without work. We've got a CV board up now. You can go and have a look if you know of anyone if no, one that's looking for uh, jobs or have positions available. Go and look. But you know, for those of you, let me encourage you who are stuck without work, God knows where you're at. And if you just seek Him, and I'm not saying you're not, but just every day make your focal point seeking Him. He will lead you down the right path. He will take you to where you need to be. But seek Him first above all else and everything else, and you will see he will take you to the right place where you'll even have choices to make for which job you're going to choose. I believe that. I speak that over everyone who's, who's uh, not employed. Do you know that we live in this country that, uh, and that's a story I forgot to end last week, but you're going to have to go and watch it if you were here. But we in a, live in a country with so much potential. But you know where the potential actually begins? It begins with every one of us here. It begins with God's children because we can go out and be the light. We can go and make a difference. We can't expect other people to make a difference. We have the power to do that. So when we're walking in the streets and the shops and we see things that aren't so good, the presence of God is in us to make a change to that situation. Over and above praying, yes, we can pray and we need to pray for our nation. But over and above that, God can use us as a catalyst to bring peace amongst people. If we would just be obedient and go into the presence of God, and understand that His presence goes with us. Wherever we go, we need to see that He is a way maker. That He will make a way. And He will use you even though you think it's just me. So God's presence, we need to chase after that. And so as we end this year, as it comes to an end very quickly, let's focus on His presence in our lives every day. Mm -hmm.